the Joe Rogan experience. Right now, uh, the, the, the belief is that, and I think we'll know more about this in a few years, that a few things happen all at the same time. It's a perfect storm. First, Hamas has been planning this attack for two years, and a, uh, one of the leaders of Hamas actually said that they've been strategically lulling Israel to sleep by making it seem like they're no longer interested in a conflict the past two years. And Israel, even just a week before the attack, allowed more uh, Gazans to come over the border and work in Israel as basically a, a reward for good behavior. Right? They thought Hamas has gone into this mode where they're more concerned about the economics of the Gaza Strip than about attacking Israel. So Israel was asleep at the wheel. Israel also had transferred a lot of IDF that would normally be at the Gaza border to the West Bank. It was also the Sabbath. It was also a major holiday. It was, it's also, they, they've had the biggest protests in, in a generation, almost the same way America was during 2020. Israel has been for the past several months over their judicial reform. So you put it all together. Can you, can you go into that a little bit, please? Yeah, so basically the judicial reform in Israel, Israel is not like the United States. They don't have a constitution. They don't have this kind of really beautiful genius system of checks and balances that we have where, you know, the president can veto Congress and the Supreme Court has a check on everyone, right? And everyone keeps each other in check. Israel just has a single parliament they call the Knesset, a prime minister that has a lot of control over that parliament because he leads the majority coalition. So basically, in Israel, the president and their Congress have a lot more power than in America, historically. The Supreme Court doesn't have the power to say no to them. But over the past 30 years, the Supreme Court has been basically grabbing more power for, for itself under the, these things called basic laws, where they can now say to the Knesset, no, you cannot uh, implement that policy in the West Bank. It violates human rights. They can, they can be, they have more powers to check the majority party. And that's come to a head now because the Supreme Court is perceived as left-wing and sympathetic to the Palestinians. Just like in America right now, the Supreme Court is perceived as right wing. And the uh, Be Benjamin Netanyahu is obviously Likud. He's the right wing party. And he's gone into coalition with these ultra kind of right wing religious. Um, and, and so it's come to a head where basically the right in Israel feels the Supreme Court is just expanding its own power and is anti-democratic. And now they want to judicial reform is basically stripping the Supreme Court of the power it's grabbed for itself over the past 30 years. Now, the left in Israel views the Supreme Court as the only protection against human rights violations and the violations of minority rights. So the left is feels the Supreme Court is a great defender of Israeli human rights, and the right feels that the Supreme Court is an undemocratic institution that's been expanding its own power for 30 years and now needs to be reined in so that the majority can govern. That's torn apart the country. It's absolutely the number one issue every day, protests all over Israel. So you put all this together with Hamas uh, backed by Iran, and, you, and you, you also throw in the fact that Israel and Saudi Arabia are on the verge of a peace deal, which is huge. It, it would be the biggest news in, in the Middle East in a, in a very long time if Israel and Saudi Arabia made peace. It would basically put um, kind of the, the death nail in the coffin for, for Hamas because Saudi Arabia is the biggest holdout now in terms of who has not made peace with Israel. So Hamas, from the point of view of, of Hamas and Iran, they think this is a, this is a last chance kind of. We have to attack now, kill this deal, or uh, we're dead forever. And they plan this thing meticulously for, for two years, intentionally lulling the Israelis to sleep. And um, they, they have brilliant success, much more success than they expected to. Now, some people have said it's an inside job. I don't believe it is. I think if it is, we'll know that from reporting um, that comes out in the next two years. 
But at this point, I believe the theory that it was an incredibly successful attack by Hamas and a perfect storm. Well, that all connects and makes sense, if that's the case. What's terrifying is there doesn't seem, what, what's always terrified me about the Middle East is that there doesn't seem to be a clear way to resolve this. I mean, if Saudi Arabia and Iran, or, or uh, rather uh, Israel, came to some sort of an agreement and made peace and, and were able to establish that long term, that'd be a great step in the right direction. But other than that, like when you look at what's happened now, oh my God, the rhetoric from both sides, it's, it's just, didn't we learn anything? anything from World War II? Didn't we learn anything from the Holocaust? Didn't we learn anything from human beings' ability to other human beings, to just turn them into a thing that's not them, mm -hmm. dehumanize them, and that there's this impulse to do so that existed forever because when we were tribal people that probably barely had a language, you had to be absolutely terrified of marauding male tribes that came over your border and wanted to kill you and take your resources and steal your women because that's what they did. And so we have this ability to look at other human beings as an other and get ruthless and horrifyingly violent because that was the only way for us to survive for thousands of years. So it's ingrained in our system, but it's, it's now it exists in the context of global war and it, and it exists in a time where you can manipulate media and spread false narratives and governments are allowed to use propaganda. They're allowed to lie to people if it's, if it's for the overall better good of the nation. It's wild. And, and, that's the root of the issue. The root of the issue is how every human being sort of reluctantly admits that there's almost no way to stop all wars. Right now, if you, if you had a magic solution to stop all wars in the world, what would it be? It doesn't exist. That's terrifying. Because the thing that we are scared of the most is global thermonuclear war. The thing that everybody should be the most terrified of, that we get so stupid that we wipe every human being off the face of the planet and we're more than capable of doing it some insane number of times over. Mm -hmm. And that they're playing with the very first steps of that game. They've moved the first pawn out onto the chessboard of the global thermonuclear war chess game. That is Ooh. fuck Who the is world. That? Yeah, everybody, yeah. every single nation okay. that's so, involved in any, every conflict and every, all these people controlling resources over a group of gigantic people with their mm -hmm. their representative, and they're saying these people are the bad people, and they're saying you're the bad people. That's it's just like human beings have always done. It's a, like literally a part of our system. So I I agree with you that we are built and hardwired for deep levels of violence we we those of us that have been lucky enough to live in safety and security we may not realize the violence we're capable of because we've never had to survive like right it, right but i do believe that there is a difference you mentioned the lessons of world war ii right we were capable of violence hitler was capable of violence but we were not the same as hitler right there was a, an imperative for us to defeat him at almost any cost and we did horrible things in that war but people understand that there was a good side and there was an evil side yes now i don't know if you or most of your listeners feel this way about israel but i do i think that in this situation israel is the good guy and hamas is the evil guy i think some people feel hamas is just uh acting like anyone would if you had taken their land and their, their freedom fighters that go a little bit overboard. I don't think that's what they are. I think they are a death cult that really believes what they write in their charter in the late 80s, that they want to annihilate every single Jew in Israel and replace it with an Islamic state and eventually have a state like ISIS. And that what they did on October 7th with the, you know, the, the barbaric slaughter, that, that's the point for them. That is what they want to do to all of Israel. And the difference is that Israel 
uh, though, though, like the American army, it's just like there's been many excesses, uh, much to criticize. If Israel wanted to annihilate Hamas and the Palestinians the same way Hamas wanted, wants to annihilate Israel, Hamas would be gone and there would be no Palestinians in Gaza. We know that Israel could obliterate them overnight. Why don't they? Well, for mixed reasons, but because they don't want to. They want to live in peace fundamentally. And so I don't think the two sides are equivalent here, though they're both capable of that, that universal among humans, which is cruelty. I don't think these two sides are the same. I really think this is a situation where there is a good guy and a bad guy. What solution could possibly be created that would somehow or another calm this down at this point? After that attack, it's so horrifying. But then the response is horrifying too, where who knows how many civilians have died in Gaza. Yeah. The, uh, so we're terrified of both. And then there's this narrative that, what was the thing with the hospital? Oh yeah, so this has been going on the past 48 hours. Basically what happened, what happened is the entire media, the, the Gaza Health Ministry, which is run by Hamas, said that Israel just bombed a hospital and killed 500 people. The entire media ran with this story. New York Times, BBC, everyone said 500 killed in Israeli airstrike on hospital. And obviously this is monstrous if so, right? This is, why would Israel bomb a hospital? Israel is known to have at least a policy of not bombing hospitals because Israel feels that it wants to generally respect what a war crime is, right? That's the policy, at least. So this this went viral. Uh, then it turned out, actually, most likely, it, it actually turned out 100% the hospital wasn't bombed. It was the parking lot next to the hospital. So that was the first ina inaccuracy in the story. Then it turned out it's very, very unlikely to be an Israeli airstrike and was almost certainly not a Hamas rocket, but a Palestinian Islamic Jihad. This is the other Palestinian terror group in Gaza. They launched a bunch of rockets. One of them was a dud and landed in the hospital parking lot. And uh, and this is on video. Al Jazeera showed the video by accident, uh, and, and that's how it, uh, that's how it's part of how it's been confirmed. What do you mean by accident? So they were, they were showing this in real time. I think it happened at si like 6.59 exactly. It's either 6.49 or 6.59. They were showing live footage of uh, or, or footage they had they had just taken of hum, of a bunch of rockets leaving the Gaza Strip to go to Israel, and one of the rockets, you could see it was, it was screwy, it kind of blew up and then you see a big explosion in Gaza, mm. right at that time. Turns out that's the exact time, the hospital allegedly blew up, so that's how they knew it was a rocket from inside, an accidental rocket from inside Gaza rather than, the Israelis air striking it. Mm. So then all the New York Times, BBC, they all started slowly changing their headlines to from 500 killed in Israeli airstrike to 500 killed in blast to, you know, at, at this point they may be saying parking lot next to hospital killed only 50 to 100 people. This is still an evolving story and we're, we're talking on, on Thursday. So by so the time this So it didn't episode, actually hit the hospital itself, it hit the parking lot next to the hospital and did damage to the hospital? The latest is that it the hospital's still standing, and it was only the parking lot next to the hospital, and all a bunch of cars may have exploded as well. So that's the latest, because they have pictures now. The next day they took pictures, and the hospital's there. I thought they had the photos of the hospital that was bombed out. The New York Times, when they reported it first, they showed a picture of a different place in Gaza that was destroyed oh by an God. Israeli airstrike, not the hospital. Oh my God! Yeah. So this is uh, this is n now, you know, I, I think there's a emerging consensus that it was a parking lot, probably not 500 people, probably more like 50 or 100, which is again tragic. Every life is tragic, but that basically the legacy media took Hamas's word as as fact and then has had to backpedal 